Welcome to another episode of The Brand Called You, a podcast and podcast show that brings you leadership lessons, knowledge, experience, and wisdom from hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. I am your host, Ashutosh Garg, and today I'm delighted to welcome um, a very accomplished professional turned entrepreneur from South Africa in Johannesburg, South Africa, Viloshni Moodley. Viloshni, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I'm really honored to be here. And um, yeah, I'm really humbled by the invitation. Thank you. Uh, Viloshni is the founder of Ultimacy Online. She's a certifi certified loveologist, and she's been recognized and felicitated several times. So uh, Viloshni, we'll, let's talk about Ultimacy Online. But before that, I want to ask you that after 25 years in the in corporate South, of South Africa, you founded Ultimacy Online. What was your motivation to become an entrepreneur? And tell me about the venture. Um, I think it was more my passion um, um, to actually uh, empower women. Um, I was, you know, I had a very successful career um, for uh, 27 years long um, in a male dominated environment as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, it was extremely amazing because I got exposure to so many areas that I would ordinarily not have. Mm -hmm. um, but the one thing that I came across is um, women who faced the very similar circumstances as I had. We, um, you know, brought up in very conservative homes, um, no sex education, and it's almost like you, an adult, and you're navigating your way through okay. uh through life and um, you know um, and and that was that was really it was my passion that 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 made, led me to um, my purpose and that's the uh, formation of ultimacy online okay and you said that you know you are a certified loveologist help yeah. me understand this Okay, so basically the term loveologist mm -hmm. is uh, someone who's a specialist in um, love, sex, and uh, relationships. Mm -hmm. You also get a sexologist, and a sexologist is us usually someone who has a PhD. Mm -hmm. So I don't have a PhD. However, I've done all of the... Um, you know, all of my um, studies with regards to sex, love and, uh, and relationships and helping people, or should I say, guiding people to navigate through these. Wonderful. So, you know, this is, these are challenges, uh, Viloshni, which I think every human being faces everywhere in the world. And I think you're doing an amazing uh, service to humanity, if I can say that. But tell me, what are some of the sexual health challenges which are faced with by people, and if you can share some anecdotes without giving any example, any names. Yeah, so uh, that's that's basically a very brilliant question, and you know that is basic, uh, basically one of the my long term vision is to change the stats um, with you know with regards to sexual health issues. Um, you know, in the country that I live in, uh, gender based violence and sexual health issues really are almost pandemics on their own. Mm -hmm. um, and many countries around the world face, face similar. So HIV AIDS uh, being the biggest um, amongst other, you know, STIs um, and STDs. Mm -hmm. And these are basically brought, brought about by unsafe behavior. Okay. And it's the lack of, you know, people understanding, um, you know, what the consequences are of, unsafe behavior by mm -hmm. having too many partners. And it's also through violation, um, you know, where people are raped and they then contract um, HIV and AIDS. Mm -hmm. um, you know, people that are also kind of living with um, certain, um, it, 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 it's not really, I don't want to term it as an illness, mm -hmm. but people that are addicted to porn, uh, mm -hmm. to sex, and that sort of thing, and don't know how to actually reach out for help. Um, and, and they are basically the people that find themselves um, most of the time in these, 
in these situations. Mm. We also have, um, you know, an increase in, in fads like uh, yoni steaming, um, you know, yoni pearls and, and all of this that is being, you know, advertised. And, and people are always on the lookout for these type of things to improve, um, you know, they, their own self-image of how they see themselves, how their performance is, et cetera, mm -hmm. which is, you know, our bodies are made to, you know, clean itself mm. to we don't need to do all of these things mm. but without information people don't know and right. these can be quite extreme with you know pelvic inflammation inf infections uh, people can go through toxic shock so these are some of the you know the sexual health uh, challenges that are faced wow. and these are not isolated to any one group of mm. of people if i can you know make that statement interesting and yeah. uh, you know, the subject of intimacy and sex, you know, are a taboo in most societies all over the world. Yeah. Um, how are you handling such subjects? So um, in, in responding to this, I do not mean any disrespect, yes, um, but, but I'm going to be as open as, mm -hmm. as possible because, you know, that's just my nature in terms of, you know, how I speak and address about address certain things, but with all due respect. So intimacy is key to, to human development mm -hmm. and intimacy is not sex. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for us to thrive as human beings, we require intimacy and we require intimacy on different levels. So I'm just going to give you a very quick over, you know, high level overview of the, you know, four types of intimacy. So we have emotional intimacy where, you know, one just feels very comfortable to share feelings openly, whether they positive or negative. Mm -hmm. Then you also have intellectual uh, intimacy where, um, you know, one can share ideas, opinions openly, um, get into a debate to share their point of view. Um, we then have a physical intimacy, which is, you know, being sensual and sexual, obviously with, um, you know, a significant other. Um, and lastly, we have experiential intimacy, which is based on activities and that's how bonds being formed. So basically intimacy is a bond in, in layman's terms. That's what it is. It's, you know, it's really nothing to do with, with, with sex. Sex, however, is a second natural instinct. Mm -hmm. And that comes after survival. Okay. So, you know, people need to gain their own understanding um, on what their religious beliefs are mm -hmm. and what their moral beliefs are mm -hmm. versus the taboo okay. that exists in their mind. And I also feel that, you know, even though the taboo exists, um, people cross boundaries to suit themselves, mm -hmm. you know? And that's the unfortunate thing. Whereas when it is education and it is about informing, um, you know, people want to say, no, it's not allowed, but it is a better approach to actually have an educated, you know, nation mm -hmm. instead of people finding out on their own and trying to, um, you know, um, how can I say, understand this and make sense of it, because mm. not everyone is at the level of maturity to be able to digest such information. Fascinating. So, you know, uh, Viloshni, you're in a, in a country uh, which, is, which is relatively, what would the right word be, uh, conservative. What have been some of your challenges in building an, uh, you know, a venture like this? Um, so to be really honest with you, it's, you know, I think there's challenges everywhere. Mm -hmm. It's the way you approach them, yeah. but I've had quite a solid support structure with my family, my mentor, um, who is in the U S mm -hmm. and, um, and also just, you know, my own knowledge. And I think my, uh, my own resilience and, uh, 
tenacious nature to just uh, proceed in what I believe in. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, moving on, uh, when I was reading about you, I was also saying, you know, uh, one thing I picked up was that a happy and healthy relationship provides a balance for individuals and couples. Um, yeah. Let me understand this. So this is also something that I'm very passionate about. So great question. Um, so relationships do provide, you know, a sense of structure, security, and mental well-being to people. Mm-hmm. Um, and in happy, healthy relationships, I'm not saying that there's no disagreements because disagreements help for couples to understand each other Mm -hmm. and to understand their ways. Because I think you continuously as a couple uh, evolving and learning about each other as you you journey through through life. Mm -hmm. But you are better positioned to focus on your aspirations, your goals. Um, You also raise a... Um, a healthy family you know where your your children don't really listen to what we say Mm -hmm. but they will mimic what we do and when when children see this and experience love in a home they're able to take that out into their own homes one day Um, and if you just look at you know if you just compare two couples you know if you uh, a couple that's you know, uh, more in a harmonious relationship and a couple that's always struggling to understand each other or just to uh, get through life together. But you will see it in body language. You'll see it in their approach and the way they dress, you know, and how they take pride of themselves. These signs are so visible. And, you know, that's the reason and my strong belief in terms of how relationships provide overall well-being. Fascinating. You also mentioned that uh, education on matters of sex help to reduce gender-based violence. And I've often uh, read about, uh, you know, people going around saying that, you know, women should uh, dress better, etc. But there's a big movement in, our, in, in, in India, where the prime minister of the country has said that the boys <clears throat> need to be educated first on how to handle themselves. And I think that's a very positive move. But I'd love your perspective on uh, sex education and gender-based violence. Um, So uh, I've I've actually done a TEDx talk on on this, Um, you know, even though it's it's, uh, headed the importance of intimacy, but I touch very heavily on, uh, on this issue. So my belief is that age appropriate uh, sex positive education, um, you know, should really start ideally at toddler stage Mm -hmm. and at toddler stage when, um, you know, exploration of uh, genitals begin, Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the times parents are um, prohibiting their kids Mm -hmm. from you know, touching themselves. And this is something very innocent Mm -hmm. that's naturally happening with the child Um, and, and pure exploration. And, you know, as if, if that is addressed appropriately, you know, the next part of the journey is basically when the child is going through puberty mm-hmm. and, you know, and then it's age appropriate again, you know, sex educate, sex positive education that happens. Mm-hmm. Whereas what's happening currently is that it's negative conditioning mm-hmm. that we instilling into kids. So kids don't actually understand how to actually how to treat different genders, um, because we always, uh, you know, kind of protecting girls. Mm-hmm. Girls have to be protected. Girls are weak, you know, and that is the message that mm-hmm. um, you know little kids get already. Mm-hmm. So you know, if if that is happening in a positive manner, and you, these are small things, if they're happening throughout the journey, you can only imagine how we would be addressing bullying, body shaming, um, gender-based violence, all of these all of these societal issues that are becoming big issues. Fascinating. So I'm now going to move on to another topic. Um, and you know you have a lot of understanding on gender balance and diversity. Um, I'd love to get your perspective on, how is gender balance being handled in the developing world? 
And what are some of the benefits of diversity? You know, on, on gender balance, um, what people need to understand is that we've been, as I said, conditioned from young mm -hmm. that, you know, a, ch a child needs to be kind of dressed in pink if it's a little girl. A boy okay. needs to be, a boy mm -hmm. needs to play with cars and guns and, you know, a girl needs to play with, play with dolls. And this is the type of conditioning that we need to move away from. We need to raise our kids in a gender neutral environment as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Because remember, currently we are also struggling with getting equality mm -hmm. and also trying to see the move of, of getting women into corporate spaces to get them into positions that really matter and you know where decisions are being made. Mm -hmm. Because what we are doing is that we are leaving so much of talent mm -hmm. out, you know, by not actually being inclusive mm -hmm. and by us not getting a full scope of um, decision making, thoughts, ideas mm -hmm. into everything that happens. All we're doing is that we're focusing on one part of um, the population, and that is detrimental to our economy. If we want to progress mm. um, globally, we need to we, we we really need to focus on um, you know on being gender neutral mm -hmm. and also being inclusive. Okay, okay, and uh, as far as the gender balance is concerned in in your country, um, how? Uh, are the how is the corporate world reacting to it? In South Africa, there is there has been an increase um, in in getting women specifically into um, into senior positions, um, into leadership positions, mm -hmm. because that is something that this country has struggled with as well, where it's been dominated by males, um, and you know until we kind of start seeing the, the balance. We're not going to, there's so much of work that needs to be done. So we're not gonna be seeing the fruits of it. Okay, well said. So Viloshni, I'm now gonna to move to the last segment of our conversation, which has a few questions for you personally. You know, okay. all our viewers and listeners like me to ask a few questions from the guest. So let me start with the first one, which is, uh, you're, you know, after 25 years in the corporate world or 27 years, you started something that you're passionate about. What are some of the core values you believe in? Um, so for me, it's to never forget mm -hmm. where I come from. Um, you know, to always be humble um, because nothing can ever, you know, we don't take any of this with us. It's mm -hmm. about how we leave people feeling. Um, for me, that's that's extremely important. Um, you know, and I think God first before anything else mm -hmm. um, in, in, in life. Um, I'm also not a judgmental person. And I also believe that, you know, I uh, do my best to also pass that message on to people, uh, even though I can't change the way they look at the world. Sure. Um, and, and just being, you know, true to myself. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. My next question to you is that from where you stand today, what does success mean to Viloshni? Success for me is having a peaceful night's sleep, uh, being gifted with a new day and new opportunities. Um, and, you know, the other thing is that um, in... I go with um, Mahatma, Mahatma Gandhi's uh, quote, which um, he said, be the change that you want to see. Mm -hmm. well and, and, that's, and that's what success is to me. Fabulous. And a follow-up question to success is who or what inspires you? Um, I'm inspired by my own journey. Mm -hmm. I'm also inspired by the women that have gone before me, my gran, my mom, my aunt, um, you know, really fascinating profiles as well. Okay. Okay. So I have time for two more questions for you. Okay. Uh, 
my next question is uh, a question on failure. And um, I have often said that parents in South Asia or Asia don't teach children it's okay to fail. We are always taught, come first in class, go to the head of the line, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And that manifests itself in our behavior patterns as we get older. Yet we learn, we fail and we learn. So my question to you, Viloshni, is what have been some of your learnings from some of your mistakes? So that's a great question. Um, so mine was, um, you know, I, I got married at a very young age. Mm -hmm. Um, I also started a family at a very young age because I didn't know any better. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, um, and, and I don't really, you, you know, if I had a chance to redo that, mm -hmm. um, I would not, I obviously would not do it, but I don't have regrets, um, you know, with having kids young, uh, raising them, but also allowing them to make the mistakes. So I've been very different in my style of parenting. Mm -hmm. um, whereas I've also been, you know, you need to come first in class, you need to do this. It's always about achieving, achieving, Correct. but it's never about being true to yourself and living your purpose, um, which, is, which is really, I mean, giving back to, to people, giving back to community, you know, that is so much more important. And I think it gives you so much um, uh, more fulfillment as a person as well. Fascinating. And my last question to you, uh, and this is relatively on a lighter note, that if you, Viloshni, were a role model to millions yeah. of children who closely followed you and your life choices, what is the one thing you would change in yourself? Um, I think that would be getting married so early. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that, that would be the, yeah. Okay, fair enough. So, <laughs> uh, Viloshni, thank you very much. It's been such a uh, pleasure speaking to you. Thank you for taking me down your journey and telling me so many new things about the subject of intimacy and, uh, you know, everything that you're doing. Uh, thank you again and good luck. Thank you so much. I am really so honored to be on the show with you. And uh, and yeah, I just hope that there was some pearls of wisdom that, uh, you know, some of the listeners will get from this. Absolutely. Well, your comment on four types of intimacy, I think it was something I learned today. And I'm sure everyone's going to learn that one. I'm glad. <laughs> Thank you again. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for listening to the brand called You Videocast and Podcast, a platform that brings you knowledge, experience and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Do visit our website www.tbcy.in to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Just search for the brand called You.